the ghastly story behind Mary Toft, the woman who gave birth to rabbits. Truth be told, history is chock full of freaks. In fact, the modern day world we enjoy was built on people with weird tastes and bizarre inclinations. Most of these historical figures at least accomplished big things with their freaky talents. But the most others achieved was a strange reputation and a curious, often overlooked spot in our history books. Such is the fate of Mary Toft, the woman who, in the early 1700s, stretched biological and society standards by giving birth to rabbits. But what began as a peculiar phenomenon turned into something even the most distinguished minds of the age couldn't quite figure out. They had no idea that Mary was concealing a dark, disturbing secret. Meet Mary Toft. It shouldn't come as a surprise that Mary Toft lived in abject poverty. Born in one of the poorest areas of London, Mary was only 17 when she married textile worker Joshua Toft. Her status wasn't exactly elevated by the marriage. Instead, Mary found herself working harder than ever to keep her family, which now included two young children, afloat. She walked two hours each day to work as a laborer, only to return to a hungry family and even more responsibilities at home. Now, none of this can excuse what happened to Mary later on, but it's important to remember when telling her story. After all, it began with what was back then considered to be a lower class, poor person tragedy. Mary had a miscarriage. Her backbreaking days likely caused the miscarriage, which occurred frequently among poor women. Mary's doctor brushed it off. In the early 1700s, 300 years before modern day medical knowledge, the female reproductive system was a mystery. And mere months later, another mystery developed. Mary randomly started having contractions. Fear of another miscarriage alarmed her family enough to send for the doctor. Mary sweat, screamed, and shuddered with pain as the unexpected labor progressed. When obstetrician John Howard arrived at the Toft house, what he saw would frighten anyone. Mary in the middle of a seemingly impossible birth. According to Howard, Mary birthed three legs of a cat in tabby color and one leg of a rabbit. Unfortunately, his description wasn't done yet. The guts were as a cat's and in them were three pieces of the backbone of an eel. By the time Mary's shrieks ended, she had apparently given birth to nine baby rabbits, all dead. Needless to say, Howard was shocked by what he'd witnessed. A small town doctor, Howard immediately sent word of Mary's situation to England's most revered doctors, in hopes of attracting national attention. To his delight, that's exactly what happened. The king found out about Mary and sent Nathaniel St. Andre, a surgeon anatomist, to investigate the claims. With that, one of the pickled fetuses Howard had collected made its way from Mary Toft's humble home all the way to the king. From then on, Mary was shepherded around London by St. Andre. She was poked, prodded, and examined by various doctors. All the while, Mary continued to give birth to rabbits especially on days when she was to be seen by a large room filled with doctors. It wasn't long before the doctors who thoroughly examined Mary and the fetuses noticed some peculiar details about the bunnies. For one, there was no way they were formed in Mary's body. One of the rabbits had grass in its stomach, proof it had once frolicked free. The rabbits also differed in age. Some were newborns while others were at least three months old. Still, St. Andre refused to see these suspicious factors for what they were. He reasoned that the contractions of the labor killed the rabbits and not foul play. The other doctors, however, weren't so easily fooled. They demanded an explanation from Mary and she hurriedly gave them one. She had once been startled by a rabbit, which led her to pregnancies. Shockingly, this explanation made sense to some 1700s era doctors. Back then, a theory called maternal impression was quite common in the medical field. It was a way of explaining birth defects and congenial disorders. For instance, Joseph Merrick, known as the Elephant Man, told a similarly bizarre story to Mary's. Though we know that Merrick was born with a congenial disorder, it was believed that Merrick's mother was startled by an elephant while pregnant with him. 
resulting in his elephant-like facial deformity at birth. St. Andre believed this story wholeheartedly. The other doctors? Not so much. Still, Mary was continuously examined by as many as ten doctors all at once, who were disappointed, if not surprised, to find that Mary, who suddenly stopped giving birth to rabbits, was actually quite ill. It was around this time that Mary was found out. A porter was caught sneaking into Mary's room with a rabbit. He was quick to blame it all on Margaret, Mary's sister-in-law, who, he claimed, asked him to find the smallest rabbit he could catch. Still, Mary refused to admit that it was all a sham, until one of the doctors threatened to perform reproductive surgery if she didn't tell the truth. That did the trick. To the surprise of no one but St. Andre, Mary confessed to the ruse. So how did she do it? Again, we'll spare you the truly gory details. The ruse was achieved the way you'd expect. Once in her body, the rabbits didn't have far to travel during the fake birth. So much was a lie. But what wasn't faked was her screaming. Mary really was in excruciating pain, and it's easy to see why. It's astonishing that she didn't die of a bacterial infection, historian Karen Harvey said. The rabbits were often concealed for days, even weeks at a time. Toft repeatedly blamed other people, from her husband to her mother-in-law and even to the wife of a local organ grinder. I think she was playing the lead role in a performance orchestrated by other people, Harvey said. The papers at the time believed otherwise. According to historian Nikki Russell, Mary and her bizarre plight was the media sensation of the year. It certainly helped to tarnish the reputation of doctors as a profession. Unfortunately for her, Mary wasn't just an outcast as a result of the trick. She was charged as a notorious and vile cheat, and imprisoned for four months. While in Bridewell Prison, she was basically a sideshow for intrigued passerbys. Her cell faced the public, making her vulnerable to nearly constant torment. She was eventually released without being charged, but found that she could never quite return to her normal life. After all, what does normal mean in Mary's shoes? Still, believe it or not, much of Mary's story isn't unusual. Whether it's the 1700s or today, there will always be people going to insane lengths to be noticed, to rise out of poverty, or to gain a brief 15 minutes of fame. Mary's 15 minutes ended long ago, though historians are comparing her to other eccentric figures from the past.